simply speaking. Hi, I'm Evgeny Schmuckler, and this time I'm going to talk very briefly on the origin and possible ways of commissioning of an ancient natural storage device used to store the most important information in life. I'm of course talking about the cell nucleus. I like it how Michael Stevens from the Vsauce channel often begins his stories. First things first. And now we have two of them to consider. The first one is that the complete information required by a fertilized egg to develop into a full-fledged taxpayer is encoded in a sequence of nucleotides making up a DNA strand of an enormous length, intricately coiled multiple times to form chromosomes enclosed inside a nucleus of a eukaryotic cell. Another thing to remember is that all organisms on Earth, including you, me, T-Rex and even Putin are theoretically descendants of a single organism, namely the last universal common ancestor. Why this is likely a simplification and what could possibly be in its place in real life is a matter of special talk. Common ancestors help in understanding and explaining evolutionary concepts. Theoretically, eukaryotes also derive from the same common eukaryotic ancestor. And we have to bear in mind that our most ancient ancestors, prokaryotes, Archaea and bacteria did not have cell nucleuses, so that their DNA freely floats in the cytoplasm until now. According to one hypothesis, a cell membrane of an ancient bacteria created intrusions eventually enveloped bacterial chromosome and separated from channels connecting a newly made envelope to the exterior, thus creating a distinct membraneous compartment. This possibility is supported by the discovery of planktomycetes. Bacteria filum, living with us in our time of the war in Ukraine, with membraneous structures similar to cell nucleus, even with primitive nuclear pore structures. Another hypothesis seems somewhat more romantic. The acquisition of cell nucleus could be a result of some bacteria swallowing an archaea, and then, instead of digesting it as an ordinary snack, harboring it, thus giving way to an endosymbiosis. We can also say that an archaea has penetrated bacteria and colonized or infested it, or that it has fertilized a bacterial cell. And here we immediately see that in the beginning eukaryotic ancestor contained different genomes, one of a host cell and one acquired, which consequentially should have merged inside a nucleus. Such a merger explains the two-layered nuclear membrane, but not why eukaryotes have linear DNA instead of a ring. Talking of the two-layered membrane, with an exception of some ultra-orthodox cells, with their nucleuses dividing as separate cells inside a host cell, most eukaryote cells undergo open mitosis, in the course of which nuclear membrane disintegrates and then reassembles around chromosomes in daughter cells. The question is why and how nuclear membrane recreates itself two layered again after disintegration. And the simplest explanation is that it does not disperse into atoms, rather disassembles into separate vesicles, each retaining its two layered structure. In response to a specific signal, these vesicles reassemble to recreate a two layered nuclear membrane. Archean cell is a candidate nucleus ancestor due to the similarity of nuclear proteins, including those of nuclear pores, as well as histone proteins instrumental for DNA packaging, with known proteins in archaea. The third hypothesis suggests a virus in place of an archaea. Additionally to the two-layered membrane, it also legalizes linear DNA of eukaryotes because viral genomes are very often made of linear DNA. And finally, the fourth idea that looks similar to the first one turned upside down, or in this case, inside out. It might at first seem a little too outlandish, but it is not. It suggests that an ancient cell membrane extruded outwards, creating a new outer cell membrane. This concept is supported by in vivo and in vitro observations presented by Albert D.G. de Roos in a journal named Artificial Life. In 2006, in his paper, The Origin of the Eukaryotic Cell, based on conservation of existing interfaces. Most biological structures and networks evolved from their more ancient predecessors, ancestors, whose functions can sometimes be understood through the accurate analysis and comparison of their observable descendants. That's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Please like this video if you found it interesting and you can also subscribe my channel where we will have plenty of interesting subjects to discuss further.